Hey, hey, I'm Shay Warner, and you are listening to Casual Cattle Conversations. If you are ready to explore different management practices and focus on improving your operation and the beef industry, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited you are listening. Alrighty, folks, this is a quick, fun interview with Damon Carson. And Damon is the owner of Repurposed Materials. And what he does is he helps repurpose materials. So this is just a fun interview to show how innovative, resourceful, and frugal for America's farmers and ranchers can be when it comes to finding unique ways to use old materials. And so uh, pretty simple and straightforward, but like I said, there's a lot of creativity and ideas that come in this episode. Before we dive into that content, If you are wondering if podcasting is right for you, I would love to share some podcast resources for you. One of the biggest questions I get from people before they start podcasting or before they start working with me is, Shay, I don't know if I have time for a podcast. And I feel you. But let me tell you, I have a guide that I will happily send to you for free. And it helps break down how long some of these tests take in the beginning up until you get a little more experienced. So you have a little bit of a rough idea of what, how how much time you might need to put into your podcast in the future if you decide to go that route. So if you're interested in learning, if you have enough time to take on a podcast and start your own, head to my website, use the contact us feature, or go to the podcast coaching page and you can connect with me there. And if you just send me a note, it'll go straight to my inbox and I will get back to you. But with that, Let's learn how we can be even more creative and innovative by repurposing materials with Damon. Alrighty, Damon, it is fun and exciting to have you on the show because this is a unique conversation and a unique business comparatively to the other types of business owners and individuals that I have on the show. So how about we start off with you sharing with the audience a little bit about what you do today and how that relates to ranchers. Sure. Well, appreciate the opportunity, Shay. So repurposed materials, our company, we take the byproducts, the waste, the cast-offs and discards of industry, unwanted by primary industry for whatever reason. And then we look to rehome that. And oftentimes it ends up on farms and ranches across America, uh, solving all kinds of common and not so common problems. So you are located where right now as we're recording? So the company's based here in Colorado. I sit in Denver. I'm looking out to my left. I'm looking at the Rocky Mountains. We do have six warehouses across the United States kind of spread out. Arizona, Colorado, Texas, Iowa, Ohio, and South Carolina. So are you, what's your role with the company? Were, I mean, were you a part of the founding of this? I mean, what, how did you get to this position? Yep. So I am the owner. I am the founder. Started in 2010. So kind of this the origin story, or as I like to say, the the Reese's moment when the chocolate meets the peanut butter. (laughs) So I was born in central Kansas, born and raised in a small town, very much in and around farming and ranching. Became very familiar with people using old oil field pipe to make corrals out of them. Um, and stuff. So just a re- very resourceful upbringing in central Kansas. So that's one. And then the second was I, as a, in my twenties, I owned a traditional garbage company, haul it off from the job site, construction trash and bury it in a landfill. And so in 2010, those two worlds kind of collided again, the chocolate and the peanut butter. Um, when a guy that I had a different company, unrelated, that I was contracting a subcontract airbrush painter to do some high-end design work. And he said, hey, Damon, if you ever get a chance to buy an old advertising billboard vinyl, like you see on the sides of the highways, advertising Budweiser, Chevrolet, Coca-Cola, that's just a waterproof vinyl with a picture printed on it. In a second life, 
They make a great drop cloth for painting is what he told me. And that was kind of the vision. Little did I know that they make great hay tarps in the ag community as a repurpose example for the farm and ranch. So that's kind of the genesis, the, the beginnings of the company. And like I said, in 2010. Well, that's, that's pretty neat that, you know, you were able to take your past experiences and combine them, like you just said, and really connect those dots for those in agriculture. And I found it neat that there's a business around this because, I mean, that's just something like I'm used to, like you said, the old uh, oil field pipe, like I grew up, um, that's what all of our, almost all of our corrals are made out of. Um, and not because there's a lot of oil in our area, but because we have family that works in areas that there are. So we have connections to get receive some of that, or like you and I were talking earlier, um, old school buses, you can kind of cut the bottoms off. You can put pipes on the front so calves can get in for calf shelters. And sure. so ranchers do a lot of neat things. What are some, you know, you already talked about old billboards being turned into tarps for hay or feed to prevent spoilage there. What are some other unique and cool repurposing projects that you help ranchers with? Sure. So I think it, it's best to kind of profile some of the, the materials that often get repurposed back in, into uh, farm and ranch, uh, livestock production, etc. So certainly along with corrals, guardrail from the DOTs, from the highways when they're widening a high ray. A lot of people listening, have, you know, that's not a unfamiliar one, but certainly guardrail, it gets a, you know, a different second life as corral panels, etc. Uh, the one that everybody that's non-farm and ranch loves, I mean, they just cackle with laughter, but if you don't own big animals, you're unaware of it. But, you know, a big market for used street sweeper brushes, for back scratchers, for horses, dairy cows, bison, et cetera. So lots of very active market for those used street sweeper brushes. One of them that we love, we I call it the Swiss Army knife on the farm and ranch, is used conveyor belting from the mining industry. Big rolls of rubber uh, could be any width, 18 inches, 24 inches, 36, sometimes as wide as 72 inches can be you know, 80 feet, 200 feet. Sometimes we get in rolls, you know, eight foot tall, you know, six, 700 feet. But on a farm and ranch, all kinds of things. It can be made into feed bunks. Uh, wind breaks for cattle is, is a popular one for old conveyor belting. Um, a lot of times it'll be an aisle mat in a barn. So, you know, to protect the horse's feet, sometimes it gets repurposed even in the, as stall mats or in the, in the horse trailers. So I always say when, you know, a farmer or rancher calls with, you know, inquiring about conveyor belt and, and I say, well, and he asks, will it work for my problem or will it solve my problem? I say, well, guess what? You may not find it to be a great solution for problem A, but it can probably solve problem B, problem C or problem D on your ranch. So, gosh, I could keep going. Do you want me to keep going? I've got others, but, uh, you know, you're, you're the you're the hosts, hostess. So I want to. I, is there like one project that or like creative use that kind of like tops the charts for you as, wow, that was thinking outside of the box? Well, I think one of them that's really kind of simplistic, but it really makes a lot of sense is swimming pool covers. Um, so these are the kinds that at HOAs, homeowners associations, at the Ritz-Carlton's, at the recreations, park and recs districts. You know, big, you know, you think about an Olympic sized swimming pool and a lot of times they're mesh. So water goes right through them and they don't want them, especially at a high end hotel, they don't want them to get frayed and faded. And so they'll retire them. And but man, in a second life, they they work perfect as a big shade screen. You know, you put it between two big telephone poles, utility poles or hook two sides to the side of your barn and you have a, you know, an extended life for that retired swimming pool cover as a shade screen, shade tarp. Would you say that ranchers um, come to you with the problem and are looking for ideas for what materials to use, or do they already have an idea of what materials they're looking for, how they want to solve the problem? What does that kind of relationship look like? Yeah, the chicken or the egg question. I, I would say it works both ways. Lots of times 
the ag community will come to us. Here's the problem we're trying to solve. You know, what do you have? You know, one of the things we always talk about with used materials is attributes, characteristics, and engineering. engineering. They want something that's, you know, UV protective. They want something that's flexible. They want something that's rigid. And they kind of, we help them shop through what we have that might fit that. But in the case of the street sweeper brushes, great example, opposite. I, in the early days, I had a lady call and say, do you have any old street sweeper brushes? And I I have to admit embarrassment at this point, but I said, uh, we don't, but what in the world would you use an old street sweeper brush for? And she says, oh, they make great cattle, cattle scratchers. And so there's examples both ways of the chicken or the egg, where sometimes we just have the materials and you know, the, the ag community figures out what to do with it. Sometimes they come to us and saying, hey, we want this. Um, can you source this? Can you procure this for us Maybe with your relationships and in industry and with the corporate America? So, you know, you're sourcing and procuring that and then you ship that to the rancher and they put it together to fit their needs for whatever problem or like with the conveyor belting or if people were say taking like tires to make shoot um mats or mats for barns or whatnot do you guys put those together like are you just basically the question is are you just sending the raw material or are you doing any assembly of your own yeah. so the answer is we just send the raw material so in the case of conveyor belting it's 36 wide maybe 100 feet long it's just a roll we send it out to you if holes need to be drilled in it to maybe we we have some farmers who will use it as a deflector. So in nil, no till applications, when you have really abrasive corn stalks, sunflower stalks that tend to be really hard on the equipment, they'll hang that used conveyor belt as a deflector on the leading edge. So it takes the abuse mm -hmm. instead of getting up into the mechanisms and stuff and um, slowing down the, the planting process. So in that case, holes need to build be drilled or whatever that's because everybody's going to modify it differently depending on their application so just trying to think here there's there's a lot we could talk about now i know you farming and ranching is only one segment of people you serve are they the majority of your business or are they kind of on the smaller end because repurposing stretches across all industries very definitely so we service all kinds of industries architects and interior designers we a lot of boat and marine so tugboat operators barge operators on the ohio and the mississippi river so these cast offs and discards can be rehomed get a second life in lots of different ways but you know farm and ranch are is huge for us. Um, so kind of our big segments are farm and ranch, livestock production, land management, and by land management, certainly ranch farm fits that, but land management could be a timber company. It could be a cemetery. It could be an airport, you know, just organizations that control a lot of land. And then the final one is the big one. The big three would be construction. Any type of remodel or construction could be big, huge skyscrapers. It could be just a remodel in the, in somebody's backyard. But so those are kind of the three big. So ag is it's an important market for us, for sure. Do you find that ranchers are looking to repurpose because there's a cost effectiveness that might come instead of you know, buying other things new, or is it because, you know, it feels good to give something a second life and know that it's just not going to the pit or the landfill? Like, why do you hear and see people wanting to repurpose these materials? So I think that's a very complicated question, and it's a little bit divisive, and I'll get to that, but I would say my impression is for most in the ag community, they're trying to be frugal. They're trying to be, you know, stretch their budgets. So whether you, you know, buy a used tractor, a used pickup truck, a used shirt, you know, you typically save 50 to 75% when you buy used. So I think that's the primary reason. Now there are some in the ag community that are certainly the green, the sustainable, the keep it out of the landfill is, is a part of it. But I think that's, the minority, but for big business where we get the stuff, corporate America, 
it's kind of the opposite. It's um, it's sustainable. It's we have landfill diversion goals. It's the circular economy. We can't throw this away. Our our shareholders, our customers don't want that anymore. So it is kind of interesting. And one of the things I often say, and this is kind of the divisive part, especially in a in a, in an election year, is I mean this really makes sense for both sides of the political aisle you know the 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 de democratic side tends to be the green they keep it out of the landfill but and i tell them all the time but you know who's keeping it out of the landfill it's more the the right leaning the conservative republicans who are the farmers and the ranchers they're the ones that are really absorbing this stuff so you know i think it really is we all work together and you know we don't have to hate the other side or dislike the other side. It, it just kind of works together. So anyway, it, it is just kind of an interesting dichotomy of how this whole repurposing the, the before and the after kind of intermingle in societies that and people groups that sometimes don't see eye to eye. That is, uh, that is an interesting perspective on how you are working with some very different <laughs> industries and tying it together. I appreciate you talking about that. And yes, it does depend on the individuals. Everyone is different. Yeah, Every business absolutely. is different and um, we need all kinds of kinds. Yeah, absolutely. We as America create the waste. We as America need to try to reabsorb as much as we can. Yes. So I I would actually like a few more examples of some stuff that you're working on, you know, we talked about, uh, conveyor guardrail, um, the advertising tarps or screens. Um, you know, I shared my own personal examples with the oil stem and school buses, you sure. know, what are, and street sweepers. I mean, give us a few more examples. I'm sure you have like a list that goes on and on and on, but <laughs> well, maybe not on and on, but it is it's it is lengthy. I, I think a, one that's um, little known, but we when they're changing out uh, playgrounds in big cities, school districts, a lot of times it's rubber pads that you know life number one when the kid falls off the monkey bars or the slipper slide, and you know try to keep them from breaking bones or cracking their skulls. Well, those used playground tiles, lots of things could be done with them, but people with horses love those as stall mats because life number one, they're meant to be cushiony to protect, you know, kids from hurting themselves on the playground. It's really helps the legs and the, you know, for the horses that stand on that all day long in the stalls and the paddocks, that would be one. Another interesting one is the big military cargo parachutes. These are the ones that drop the Jeeps and the the pallets of food and rations and ammunition out of the big jet planes during war times, military type stuff. But they're huge, 30 foot, 60 foot, 100 foot diameter. So that's an alternate to the shade screens. A lot of those get purchased by livestock owners to um, rig up as shade screens. Another one that comes to mind is turf from the football fields. So this is soccer fields. Most Turf today lasts about seven, eight years, and then they replace the field. It's one and a half inch plastic shag carpeting. Two ideas in ag that come to mind is one is poultry. They'll use it as a nest pad. So you can buy a new nest pad, one and a half inch plastic shag carpeting, brand new. But what is used football turf these days? It's just one and a half inch plastic shag carpeting that they lay under the cages of the laying hen. So it's a little cushiony. So when the egg drops, the egg doesn't crack. Another one that's popular with used turf is show cattle or any kind of a show animal where they want to keep them out of the dirt and the muck right before the 4-H season right now. It's county fair time. Um, so that's another popular one for that. Insulation, lots of used rigid insulation coming off of school districts, warehouses in the big cities. Four by eight sheets can be, you know, two inches, three inches, four inches. That often gets repurposed for low cost building insulation in barns and outbuildings. Stuff like that. Uh, lots of precast concrete, you know, two, three, four inches, depending on the application, flat pieces. That often gets purchased by livestock owners to be aprons around water tanks, around feed bunks to, you know, keep the muck and the mire down. And 
So, you know, those are more that come to mind. I'm sure if you wanted to keep going, we could, but those <laughs> well, are more. I'm curious, um, geographically, since you're spread out, are there different regions of the country that request certain types of materials for projects compared to other ones? Like, what are the differences you see regionally for that? So I would I would actually answer it opposite. I would say the demand, which is your question, is pretty equal. I mean, a cow in Florida and a cow in Oregon kind of have the same needs, if you will. Mm -hmm. What we do see, though, is the sourcing of materials can sometimes be regional. So if you're in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Western PA, where there's a lot of oil field work, North Dakota, the Bakken, you know, you're very familiar with oil field pipe. If you're in Oregon or New Hampshire, where there's not a lot of oil field production, you know, it's less common or it's maybe to the point of unheard of what's oil field pipe. I, I don't even know about that. And it's just off the radar screen. So a lot of times it's the procurement stuff that's more regional in nature than the actual demand. Because again, a horse is a horse, no matter where it's at, right. a, a buffalo is a buffalo if, you, if you're trying to solve a problem. So that's how I'd answer that question. All righty. Well, before we wrap up today, do you have any final thoughts or anything you would like to share with those listeners out there about repurposing? Well, I, I have a funny anecdotal story. So I was, I speak a lot around the country at conferences and I was speaking to a bunch of engineers uh, several years back and it, we came to the Q&A time and, a, and an engineer in his mid fifties raises his hand and said, Hey, Damon, did you invent repurposing? And I, I just tried not to to laugh. And I, I just thought it was such an insult and such an ignorant question. I mean, one, did you have parents, grandparents that lived through the Great Depression? Um, but obviously, it was a city slicker. I mean, he just had no idea. And, and I think the ag community, agriculture is the one industry, and I've done this for almost 15 years now, is the one industry that you don't have to introduce or teach repurposing to. I mean, you guys have just done it generation after generation. Shay, you started with some examples just from your own upbringing. Um, so I just think it's kind of funny, but most other industries, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Wow. Why didn't somebody else think of that? I'm so glad you thought of that. And, you know, a rancher in North Dakota, a farmer in Iowa, they're just kind of not, maybe not even snickering. They're just belly laughing about, you know, how foolish is that big city engineer to ask such an ignorant question or an uninformed question. Well, we uh, definitely are uh, frugal people and frugal uh, and resourceful. You frugal and, and, resourceful and innovative and not and innovative uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, we uh, we are some leaders in that area. <laughs> I, I would 100% <laughs> and, and a lot of other areas. So, where can people go to find more information? about your company if sure. they want to. Yep. You can just Google repurposed materials. If you're a Facebooker, we have a very active Facebook page, repurposed materials. We'll get you there. LinkedIn, if you happen to do that. We have a widely followed newsletter where we broadcast, you know, it's certainly showing new products, but it's just showing a lots of ideas. A lot of people that are, never even buy from us just like the inspiration, the education on how people in different industries are solving problems. So if you go to our website, there's a little pop-up. You can sign up for our e-newsletter e that goes out several times a week, but love to have you join us. And um, obviously we love customers, but we love ideas and just the, the thought leadership that the ag community gives us on how to rehome, reuse, repurpose all these cast-offs and discards. Well, awesome. Thank you very much for being on the show today and sharing your experiences and stories and uh, shedding good light on agriculture for being uh, resourceful. Thanks, Shay. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, the best way to support this podcast or other podcasts is to share with a friend, give a rating or review. And if you really want to connect with me, I would love to get a DM from you or a message on my website hearing what questions, thoughts, ideas, follow-ups, anything. I really enjoy knowing who is listening and uh, learning about your operations. So with that, happy ranching and have a great day.